The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our next presenter is going to be Carmelo Di Bella. Now, Carmelo is going to speak to us about chloride transport measurements for a plain and internally cured concrete mixture. Tell you a little more about Carmelo. He is a graduate student at Purdue University. He received his bachelor's in material science from Milano Bicocca University. He re his research interests include internal curing and chloride transport. Please help me welcome Carmelo Di Bella. Okay, so first of all, thanks for staying up to the end of this session. And um, uh, today I will talk about uh, some chloride transport measurements for plain and internally cure concrete measures. Uh, this is the work that uh, I did during my master's degree uh, in the last two years at the university. And uh, though the results that we will see, those, are, those mixtures are exactly the same mixtures that were used for the casting of two bridge decks in the state of Indiana. So here is a small outline, we will go with, uh, with a small introduction. Uh, it was a long day about internal curing, so I will really reduce to just one minute about uh, internal curing the ground, because we have heard a lot of that. And then we will directly focus on uh, the goals of this research, and I will show you a few of the tests that, that we perform, and then we will finally conclude. So let's start saying that, of course, a durable and long-lasting uh, ride that needs to be... Thank you. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, where is the mouse? Here. Thank you. Okay, and we were saying that a durable, long-lasting concrete uh, is uh, the desire for many transportation agencies, engineers, researchers, and the durability of the concrete is uh, largely governed by the fluid transport and the uh, the universe of the deleterious ions, such as the chloride ions. In fact, the chloride ion itself is not a problem for the concrete. However, if it reaches the steel in the reinforcement structure, in the reinforced structure, it will uh, be the cause of some corrosion, pro corrosion products that will extend some tensile forces, which may lead to delamination. And of course, all this is going to lead to a decrease in the durability and the surface life of our concrete. Uh, it is very well known, and uh, today there was a lot uh, explained about this, that uh, uh, the use of uh, low, water to, uh, low water to cement uh, ratio mixtures, as well, uh, with the implementation of the silica film as a fillers, for example, they will reduce the permeability of the concrete. However, they have exacerbated the problem of uh, every age cracking. So, internal queuing is uh, a technology that we have right now that is able to reduce the potential for every age cracking, but at the same time, it's going to increase the hydration and uh, make a, a microstructure that is much more dense, uh, and we will also have uh, a less superficial transition zone. So here there are just a few examples. Uh, we will focus the uh, few examples of uh, internal curing agents. We will directly focus in this research uh, uh, with the use of lightweight aggregates. 
So internal curing background. Uh, well, very well, very easy. Oh, I can I can simplify saying that uh, the conventional way is uh, pumping some additional water on the surface of the pumping, and this water it will it will eventually reabsorb inside of our concrete over time. However, there are two problems. So the first one is due to the fact that sometimes in the field it uh, can be difficult to apply this external water. So this, this is why sometimes they just uh, cover the concrete and this is not going to add, add any additional water. The second problem is again related to the use of a low water to cement ratio where the, the, the microstructure may be so dense that this water may have a hard time to go throw out the cross-section of the concrete. So here's just a, an example of how this water can be pulled from the top. The black spots represent the fine uh, or the coarse aggregates in the cement matrix. Now, internal curing is a, a technology where we can directly supply this, uh, this additional water directly from the inside of our company. So, if you see the, on the bottom of this illustration, you can see that the, some of the fine and coarse aggregates, they are replaced with uh, pre-wetted lighter aggregates. So, this water then, uh, if they are uniformly distributed, they, we will have uh, uniformly uh, internal pure water throughout the cross-section of, uh, of the concrete. But, uh, the goal of this research was that there has been a lot of work documenting the benefits of internal curing uh, concerning the octogenal shrinkage, the LEH cracking. However, there is uh, not enough work uh, how internal curing can be beneficial for fluid transport and the ingress of uh, chloride ions. So, what uh, we wanted to do, we wanted to evaluate the chloride transport uh, in uh, mixtures that were used for, uh, for in the field application. So this is why we, mixed, uh, we, we, we are testing two, two, uh, sorry, two bridge decks that were cast uh, in Indiana. So one of those was a plain mixture, and the other one was an internal pure mixture. Additional two uh, high performance concrete were cast in the state of New York. Uh, today we will directly focus only on the bridge decks that were cast uh, in Indiana. And uh, here, from this map, uh, you can see that uh, really this project is a, a unique project because it uh, allows us to monitor the long-term performances of uh, two bridge decks that they were cast, uh, in, uh, they were cast uh, very close to each other using the same construction crew, using the same, con uh, con the, the same materials. And, um, and we can also assume that uh, the exposure to the traffic and to the environment is uh, the same. So here are two pictures. The, the plain concrete was uh, cast, uh, uh, it was uh, pumped, while uh, the internally pure concrete was uh, uh, placed by means of a bucket. Here are uh, the materials, because uh, during the construction, we actually went there, we assisted the construction. Uh, there is uh, available uh, a document that uh, uh, is uh, documenting the doc document of all the construction of those two bridge decks. And uh, we took materials directly from the site in order to perform additional tests uh, in the lab. This is the mix design that was used, uh, where the approximately the 50% of the fine sand was uh, replaced with uh, pre-wetted lighted aggregates. And uh, let's see all the, some of the results. So, of course, uh, in order to monitor the chloride ingress, the first test, one of the most common tests, is the rapid chloride penetration test. And this test, uh, one surface uh, is exposed to a sodium chloride solution, the other one to a sodium hydroxide solution. The test uh, is, uh, lasts for six hours, uh, 60 volts are applied, and the current is monitored over this time. So, the results show that uh, at any age, internally pure concrete shows a lower pen chloride penetration. So after 180 days, there is a 35% lower penetration in the internal nuclear complex. Now, someone may argue to the fact that uh, uh, rapid chloride penetration test is not really a test uh, 
for the penetration of the chlorides, which is a, it is much more a measurement of the resistivity or the conductivity of the, our concrete. But there is another way which is much, much easier and especially faster, which is the surface resistivity. With this test, uh, we cast, uh, we prepared the sample, and uh, the day after, they were placed in the lime water over the whole period of time. So, what we can see, again, from, uh, those, uh, from, uh, from those results regarding the resistivity, is that up to 56 days, the resistivity of the plane and internally pure mixtures are very similar. However, after one year, the internally pure concrete shows 45% uh, uh, increased resistivity compared to the plane. Now, here there are two things that I want to emphasize. So the first one that applies also for the RCTP is the fact that uh, when we want to compare the plane and the internally pure concrete, we should also keep in mind that uh, we are changing uh, the, 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 the composition of our concrete. So what I want to say here is that uh, we are adding some uh, conductive material. So since those measurements are measurements of resistivity, we really need to take into account uh, that uh, the internally pure concrete, especially at the beginning, may, uh, may be more conductive than it actually is. Now, the second point here is the fact that uh, we, as I already said, that we put the samples, we cure the samples in uh, live water. So this is not really what happens in the field, and this uh, allows uh, also the material, the plain material, to actually cure more. So, as a consequence, we should imagine that the difference between the plane and the internally pure concrete may be actually even higher. So, the, of course, in order to then determine the surface life of our concrete, we also need the chloride diffusion coefficients. Now, to, to do this, we use a two tests. The first one is the rapid chloride migration. In this test, one sample is exposed to a solid chloride solution, the other, uh, the other uh, surface of the sample to a sodium hydroxide solution, and uh, for 24 hours, um, a, a certain voltage is applied. So at the end of this test, the sample is split, and some uh, silver nitrate is sprayed on the cross section of the sample, and you will assist to the formation of this uh, wide uh, area which represented the chloride from penetration. Now, we measure those tests, and we are able to calculate the chloride infusion coefficient. So, what we assist again is that, again, at any age, the chloride diffusion coefficient of internally cured, cured, cured concrete are lower compared to the plane. But uh, to confirm those data, we also use a, another approach. We use a, what is called a multi-ionic model, in uh, this model, which is called Stadium Lab, in this model we use uh, those cells. They look pretty much uh, similar to the RCPT cells. They are just bigger. And in this case, uh, you apply 20 volts over a period of 14 days. Now, with this, uh, again, the current uh, over time is uh, monitored and recorded. And with those data, along with the porosity data, those are entered in the software, and the software will model for you, the, the, the chloride diffusion coefficient. So, and the, the results show here again that the, the chloride diffusion coefficient for internally pure concrete are lower compared to the plane measures. In addition to this, um, also with this software, it's also possible to measure the porosity of the, of the, of the matrix. So, what we assist is that uh, we measure the porosity. And the porosity of the internally pure concrete is higher compared to the plane. And this is normal because we are changing part of the fine sand with uh, something that is much more porous. However, as you can see, the torquosity is uh, lower in the internally pure. So that means uh, really that uh, we are changing somehow something in the matrix of, uh, of uh, uh, something that is getting much more dense if internally pure, pure, internal curing is used. So the final, the last test that we did is uh, the chloride uh, profile. So in this test, a uh, uh, sample is uh, is folded uh, from the top of a sodium chloride solution. So what we did, uh, we took uh, three different ages of curing. 
So 28 days, three months, and six months, those were what the samples were left to cure. After those three ages, the samples were pounded for 28 days and 91 days. And uh, what, uh, what we, at, at the end of the pounding, uh, uh, basically what we need is uh, some grinding, we collect this powder, and then we need some titration. Here I want to show you that we use uh, something that was very, very interesting, because let us uh, spend a lot of time. This is what is uh, the automated uh, titration unit. So with this machine, we were able to um, not filtrate, so for, for some of you who already did some titration, know that uh, for titrating the sample, it takes up to two hours. Then we were able to, to, to measure up to 14 layers in once. And in addition to that, uh, we also, the, of course, the potential of the solution is uh, automatically recorded. So it was something very extremely important that uh, made us uh, to speed up the process incredible. And uh, this is uh, just a few, uh, just one comment on how the machine works where the titration titrator adds some silver nitrate in the solution, while at the same time, with uh, the use of uh, elect an electrode, the potential is measured. So once the inflection point is reached, so this is, uh, this is the point where then uh, uh, we will calculate the chloride amount. On the right, uh, you can see um, a plot of the results that we obtain with the automatic system and the results that we obtain with the manual titration, just the ISDN titration. So you can see that the results, they are very, very close. So, and here are the results. So, after one month of curing and after 20 days and uh, three months uh, of pounding, what you can see here is that uh, up to the first, the eight up to 10 milliliter, we assist to iron chloride pump. So this is something that uh, we were really, was weird, because that uh, was the first test and was saying something opposite. So, but then this is when we came up with the idea that uh, maybe there are some artifacts in the system. Because if you see a, 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 at a deeper depth, you can see that the chloride content is exactly the same. So basically, the ACN tells us to cut the sample. In this way, cutting the sample, you are putting the porosity of the lightweight particles directly in contact with the solution. So those uh, reservoirs of water, they will become reservoirs of a solution while you are doing some grinding. So to confirm this, we thought, well, maybe if I just do exactly the same thing, I pawn my sample, but I pawn just, just for 15 minutes. So if the porosity is there, we should be able to see this difference already after 15 minutes. And this is what happened. We saw this uh, higher chloride content in the first layers of, uh, for in the case of internal curing. Now, I just took up a few pictures just to show you that when you soak up in the sample, you are really exposing all this porosity directly to the solution. So the things change a little bit when uh, we are looking at the uh, uh, samples that uh, they were allowed to cure for longer. So here you have uh, three months curing and six months curing, and then again the samples were pounded for 28 days and 91 days. And you can see, you can see that the, again at the beginning, you have a, a little bit of a higher chloride content due to this artifact, but it's no more up to 8 or 10 millimeters. This difference is reduced. And at later ages, you can see that the, the chloride, the chloride content of the internally pure concrete is lower compared to the plain. Now, this is a picture that John already showed. Because after 20 months, we went back to, to our bridges uh, just for a visual inspection. And uh, what, do we, uh, what we saw is that uh, the plain concrete showed two long tracks. One, one is a longitudinal, the other one is a transverse. We took a few pictures of this. And uh, actually, the transverse track went through the overlay of the deck. 
while the internal pure bridge tag didn't show any crack, any visual, crack, visible crack at the age we went there. So this leads us to the conclusion. Today I was uh, uh, talking about uh, some chloride uh, measurements uh, on uh, plain and internally pure concrete. Those, uh, those mixtures are the same that were used for field application. And uh, we saw that uh, the internally pure, internal pure is able to reduce uh, the chloride penetration, it is, uh, is able to increase the resistivity of the concrete, is able to reduce the chloride infusion coefficient, and then we saw also benefits for, for coming from the chloride profiling, where uh, lower uh, lower chloride ingress uh, is seen in case of internal pure concrete, especially a later age. Now the last point I want to emphasize here is that, again this idea of artifacts. When we are testing we are when we are testing internal curing. We really need to understand that this is not a conventional concrete, and sometimes the STM that we use may be some problems because they do not take into account the nature of the light reduction. So, to conclude, I guess that this really shows that the durability and the surface life of the concrete can be increased in the case of internal curing. Well, Carmelo, thank you again for excellent presentation.